I guess you could call it a blended doggy family. Five dogs brought together by two owners. The problem, making them all get along. The canine coach is here with more. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, but right now, these five dogs seem to be best of friends, I have to say. Yes, they're getting along well. <laughs> they get along well right now? Right now. Okay, so what happened with these, these sets of dogs? So you, you two are dating, and you brought your dogs together. You have three dogs, you have two. What happened when that happened? Well, sometimes we'd be out in the back, having barbecuing, or just walking around inside, watching TV, and before you know it, two of them would get into it, and the two would start fighting. A lot of fighting, huh? And some of these dogs are really old. You've got two dogs here that are 13 years old. Right. This one here is about 13 and a half, and this one is 13, pretty close to that, the little chihuahua here at the end. I don't know if you guys can take a close-up look of this little chihuahua, <laughs> but it has his tongue out. <laughs> so cute. Okay. Boy, yes, tell us, what, what do you do if you have dogs like this that are not getting along? Well, there's three basic kinds of uh, problems like that. There's jealousy over plain jealousy, there's territorial, and there's food. Okay, and so you guys, what were they suffering from? Two of them. They had the uh, jealousy, jealousy over the two people who just started dating one another. All of a sudden, you're not paying attention to us. Oh, I'm so jealous. Why come my mama doesn't love me anymore? Okay. And jealousy of one another. I'm not going to share him with you. He's mine. I'm not going to share him with you. Okay, who are the culprits? Well, actually, Foxy, the little, the middle one, the little tiny toy Pomeranian, um, and actually Goober sometimes with, with yeah, Sassy. sassy. Okay, so what did you guys do to try to correct this problem? We, well, basically, we pulled them apart <laughs> and tried not to let them get close to each other, and then I heard about uh, Floyd, and so I called. Okay, what did you suggest? We set up scenarios. We would act like we were living. So we would watch some television together. We'd have leashes on them. If they got a little growly, we would pull them apart and say, no, that's not the way we're going to be. We'd walk around the house. We would get into places like tighter areas, choke points down hallways. A lot of times dogs are vying for your attention, and you get into a choke point and they'll fight. So we would correct that. And everywhere we went, we had our trusty can with us to make sure we could shake this and say no. Okay. Oh, they got that always gets the dog's <laughs> attention. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you want to make sure you put the leashes on it first yes and you sit with them and you make sure they're they can't touch each other can't touch each other because you don't want the leashes to tangle with one another but you let them look at one another and if they get a little growly you say no we don't do that no so you correct them right away yes, yes. and of course with the feeding you say you should also give them all separate bowls if you have food jealousy yes and make sure they're on leashes at first yes if you have food jealousy you have a bowl for each dog you do it on the leashes and you introduce them slowly and that takes a couple weeks okay and you keep going back to this can let's show this can one more time it's <laughs> just a can with some pennies pennies in it and you said this is like the most effective thing when a dog you is doing something it, wrong you shake it and they'll just look at you and then you give them the advice of stop that mm -hmm. Look at that. Got their attention right away. They don't Love like it. Sound. Okay, if you have a question for Floyd, you are totally welcome to send us an email at news at com and write your question for Floyd and title it K9 Coach. Thank you, folks.